Greetings, everybody. Get your King James Bible. We're going to do the continuation of the Jeremiah series. The turn to Jeremiah chapter 22. This is Chaplain Bob Walker, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. All right, Jeremiah 22, verse 1. Thus saith the Lord, Go down to the house of the king of Judah and speak there this word and say, Hear the word of the Lord, O king of Judah, that sitteth upon the throne of David, thou and thy servants, and thy people that enter in by these gates. Thus saith the Lord, Execute ye judgment and righteousness, and deliver the spoiled out of the hand of the oppressor. And do no wrong, do no violence to the stranger, the fatherless, nor the widow, neither shed innocent blood in this place. Now you can you can shed guilty blood. I mean, the Lord has an entire chapters on a judicial system, which uh, used to be followed back in this country back in the day to a certain extent. But uh, you better believe we don't follow it anymore. No, matter of fact, everything we do is the opposite. So, verse 4. For if ye do this thing indeed, then shall there enter in by the gates of this house kings sitting upon the throne of David, riding in chariots and on horses, he and his servants and his people. But, ah, uh, here's those goats, those goats again, you know, the goats, but, but if ye will not hear these words, I swear by myself. I always found that interesting, you know. Do you hereby swear to God to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? So help you, God. Well, the Lord says, I swear by myself. So the Lord, God is swearing to God. But if you will not hear these words, I swear by myself, saith the Lord, that this house shall become a desolation. For thus saith the Lord unto the king's house of Judah, Thou art Gilead unto me, and the head of Lebanon. Yet surely I will make thee a wilderness, and cities which are not inhabited. And I will prepare destroyers against thee, every one with his weapons, and they shall cut down thy choice cedars, and cast them into the fire. And many nations shall pass by this city, and they shall say every man to his neighbor, Wherefore hath the Lord done thus unto this great city? You know, why did the Lord do this to his city? This was his city. Why did he do this? Verse 9. Then they shall answer, because they, the people, because they have forsaken the covenant of the Lord their God and worshipped other gods and served them. Yep, you want to go serve the devil when things get bad? Have the devil save you. See how that works. Verse 10, Weep ye not for the dead, neither bemoan him, but weep sore for him that goeth away. For he shall return no more, nor see his native country. Yeah, go weep for those that go into the captivity, those that become slaves in Babylon. Like Daniel. Daniel was a prince of the tribe of Judah. Read the book of Daniel. 
He served the king in Babylon. That was up and down. Look at the uh, three Hebrew children, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. They got thrown into the fire. Didn't they? Oh, yeah. Verse 11. For thus saith the Lord, touching Shalom, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, which reigned instead of Josiah his father, which went forth out of this place, he shall not return thither any more. Now, Josiah was a good king. Josiah was a great king. But the son, not so much. Verse 12. But he shall die in the place whither they have led him captive and shall see this land no more. You know, these people went into captivity at for 70 years. You got to figure something. If you're, you know, even if you're 10 years old and you go into captivity for 70 years, you're 80 at the end of the captivity. How many people can do a journey from one country to another at, you know, 80 years old? Not many. So I imagine almost everybody that went into captivity was dead by the time Babylon was destroyed by uh, the Persians, which modern-day Persia, believe it or not, is Iran. Do you know that the Persians, modern, well, the modern-day country that is in Iran, allowed Judah to return to Jerusalem and rebuild the temple? Yeah, they did Judah a favor. But you would never know that reading the headlines today. Oh, Iran is so bad. Iran's terrible. Iran this, Iran that. Verse 13. Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness. Yeah, did you steal everything from everybody else to get the money to build your house? Woe unto him that buildeth his house by unrighteousness and his chambers by wrong, that useth his neighbor's service without wages, and giveth him not for his work. Yeah. You want to tell your neighbor, oh yeah, I'm going to hire you, and I'm going to, you know, I want you to do work for me for a while. And then when it comes time to get paid, you say, up, oh, you know, get out of here. I'm not paying you. I'm telling you, a lot of rich people, they're famous for that. Very famous for that. Verse 14. That saith, I will build me a wide house and large chambers, and cutteth him out windows, and is sealed with cedar, and painted with vermilion, Shalt thou reign, because thou closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice? And then it was well with him? Uh, now, cedar is a very interesting wood. Cedar does not rot. Uh, cedar grows quite well in swamps. It doesn't rot. Not only that, it's resistant to termites. Termites don't like cedar. A lot of bugs don't like cedar. Uh, you ever see um, those little tiny bags with cedar shavings that they put in closets to keep the moths uh, from eating your wool clothing? Yeah. Cedar was one of the best woods to use for uh, building in the inside wood of a house. Plus, it's got a nice smell. So, cedar is an expensive wood. We grow cedar down here in Florida. It 
So, verse 15, Shalt thou reign because thou closest thyself in cedar? Did not thy father eat and drink and do judgment and justice, and then it was well with him? He judged the cause of the poor and needy. Then it was well with him. Was not this to know me, saith the Lord? But thine eyes and thine heart are not, but for thy covetousness, and for to shed innocent blood, and for oppression, and for violence to do it. Therefore, thus saith the Lord concerning Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, they shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, my brother, or ah, sister. They shall not lament for him, saying, Ah, Lord, or ah, his glory. He shall be buried with the burial of an ass, drawn and cast forth beyond the gates of Jerusalem. You're going to get buried like an animal. Verse 20. Go up to Lebanon and cry, and lift up thy voice in Bashan, and cry from the passages, for all thy lovers are destroyed. I spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou saidst, I will not hear. This hath been in thy manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. Read the book of Judges. Um, you know, it's a cycle. When people are blessed of the Lord, they get fat and happy, they don't listen to the Lord anymore. Then the Lord would bring in the oppressors. People would repent. Follow the Lord. Lord would bless them. They get fat and happy. Forsake the Lord. Lord would bring oppressors. I mean, you read the entire book of Judges and it's the same every, it's always the same. It follows that cycle. It really does. And you think the Lord does anything different in the New Testament than the Old as far as getting people to repent? What do you think the tribulation period is for? It's judgment against the wicked. Well, wrath against the wicked. But it's judgment against his people for their forsaking him. I mean, it's sad. People go to church for 15, 20, 30 years and they do not know the character of God. They don't know. And I'm not saying I do. I mean, I've got an idea. Uh, that's all I have is an idea. But they have no idea at all. They have no clue. I mean, most people in the West, Western churches, they don't even think they're going to be here for uh, the Lord's judgment upon this wicked land. Oh, we're going to fly away out of here any second now. They're in for a rude awakening. Uh, most of them, I'll guarantee you, the majority of them are going to lose what their little lukewarm faith that they had. So, verse 21. I spake unto thee in thy prosperity, but thou saidest, I will not hear. This hath been thy manner from thy youth, that thou obeyest not my voice. The wind shall eat up all thy pastors. Just like your pastors in a church. You know, there was a place, it's called Nevada. It's spelled just like Nevada, but they call it Nevada. A town in Missouri. It's in western Missouri. On an Easter Sunday, a tornado ripped through the church killed a number of people, men, women, children. And people couldn't understand why. Why? Why would God let this happen? Well, when you understand that Easter is the name of the spring goddess 
of fertility. Uh, what does bunny rabbits and Easter eggs have to do with Jesus? Nothing. They had a woman pastor. Guess what kind of Bible they use? Probably an NIV. I'm not sure if the woman pastor was a lesbian or not, but uh, wouldn't surprise me. Uh, I mean, I could, a few year, a number of years ago, I could have told you, but I, you know, I can't remember everything. I guess I'm having some senior moments, um, but uh, I'm not sure if she was a lesbian or not. But uh, that's the kind of church it was. So the tornado ripped in there and wiped it out. And it shook up people's faith. But they rebuilt. And they keep going. So, uh, you know, instead of people looking at why would the Lord let this happen? You know, they just rebuild and keep going. You know, it's like you build a ship and it sinks. You bring it up out of the water and you just do a little bit of repairs on it and then take it out and it sinks again. You know, maybe you need to look at the problem. But, uh, you know, where, where does the Bible say to have a woman for a pastor? And Easter. I mean, come on. Really, Easter is the spring goddess, the female god, the queen of heaven. And they just couldn't understand why their tornadoes struck their church and why God would allow that. Well, maybe God wasn't there to protect it. Did you ever think about that? Why did God let that happen? The wind shall eat up all thy pastors, and thy lovers shall go into captivity. Surely then shalt thou be ashamed and confounded for all thy wickedness. O inhabitant of a Lebanon, that makest thy nest in the cedars, how gracious shalt thou be when pangs come upon thee, the pain as of a woman in travail, a woman given childbirth. As I live, saith the Lord, though Kuniah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, were the signet upon my right hand, yet would I pluck thee thence. And I will give thee into the hand of them that seek thy life, and into the hand of them whose face thou fearest, even into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and into the hand of the Chaldeans. And I will cast thee out, and thy mother that bare thee, into another country where ye were not born, and there shall ye die. But to the land whereunto they desire to return, thither shall they not return. Is this man, Kaniah, a despised broken idol? Is he a vessel wherein is no pleasure? Wherefore are they Cast out he and his seed, he and his seed, and are cast into a land which they know not. O earth, 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 hear the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Write ye this man childless, a man that sh uh, a man that shall not prosper in his days. For no man of his seed shall prosper sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Now, here it is, the Lord is... Now let's read this again. Verse 30. Thus saith the Lord, Write ye this man childless, a man 
that shall not prosper in his days, for no man of his seed shall prosper, sitting upon the throne of David and ruling any more in Judah. Now, who is this Kuniah? Evidently, he was some kind of a, well, here we go. Jeremiah 37 and verse 1. And King Zedekiah, the son of Josiah, reigned instead of Kuniah, the son of Jehoiakim, whom Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, made king in the land of Judah. So, evidently, Nebuchadnezzar made Nebuchadnezzar made King Zedekiah to rule instead of Kuniah, evidently. That's what it looks like to me. So, there you go. Do you know that Nebuchadnezzar wrote one chapter of the Bible? Did you know that? He did. Read Daniel chapter 4. It says, Nebuchadnezzar the king, unto all people, nations, and languages that dwell in all the earth, peace be multiplied unto you. I thought it good to show the signs and wonders that the high God hath wrought toward me. How great are his signs and how mighty are his wonders. His kingdom is an everlasting kingdom and his dominion is from generation to generation. I Nebuchadnezzar, excuse me. I Nebuchadnezzar was at rest in mine house and flourishing in my palace. I saw a dream which made me afraid, and the thoughts upon my bed and the visions of my head troubled me. Now, if you want, you can read this on your own, but I just wanted to point out that Nebuchadnezzar wrote a chapter in the Bible. So, evidently, he was inspired of, by the Holy Spirit. And remember, God reigns, uh, raises up kings, and he brings down kings. In Daniel 2, let's read an, ins, uh, an excerpt. Verse 19, Then was the secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision, then Daniel blessed the God of heaven. Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his. And he changeth the times and the seasons. Doesn't the Lord change from winter to spring, spring to summer, summer to fall? Yeah. And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. Right here, in Jeremiah, the Lord removed the king of Judah and set up the king of Babylon. Do you know why Biden and Harris are in office? Because the Lord put them there. And think about it, Biden will probably die in office. And then we're going to have Kabbalah Harris as president. Should take a look at the uh, her husband. He was a, um, a Hollywood lawyer. Yeah, tied in with the Hollywood crowd. So, just keep that in mind. Hey, Donald Trump had uh, Jared Kirshner. And uh, we got, uh, I don't remember his name. I looked, I looked him up. I spend a lot of time doing research. But, uh, yeah. But God sets people over us. And a pastor that I really, 
really respect, one of the few, said that a, a nation's rulers and leaders would be a spiritual reflection of the people. And it's sad when the churchgoers think that Donald Trump is going to save this country. That's sad. Donald Trump has a star on Hollywood. What does that tell you? He's an actor. Just like Ronald Reagan. Do you know Ronald Reagan? Everybody's like, oh yeah, he was a great president. He had over a hundred people that were had been investigated or were in indictment of his cabinet. Over a hundred. And uh, <laughs> yeah, Reagan, uh, they thought he was great. I don't know, maybe compared to some of the other people, he, I don't know. It's hard to tell. One day they will get their reward. But sadly, sadly, wicked rulers are a reflection upon the spiritual state of the people of a nation. Daniel 2.21, and he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. He revealeth the deep and secret things. He noteth what is, he knoweth what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. So, have things, uh, is there much difference between uh, Israel of old and Israel of today? Not my book. So, all right, well, this is the end of Jeremiah chapter 22. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb of God slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.